Good morning, church family, and everybody who's joining us. And normally on a Sunday, I'd say I welcome you all in the name of Jesus Christ, which is a reminder that everybody is welcome here, no matter who you are or where you are in your faith journey. This morning, I thank you for welcoming me into your space to lead you in worship and prayer for this morning on uh, today, the 18th of July, Sunday, the 18th of July, our service of worship. We'll be following the lectionary scriptures, and you can see them in the slide there. That's Psalm 23, Jeremiah 23, 1 to 8, and Mark 6, 30 to 34, and 53 to 56. And the, the theme for the Sunday would be Jesus, the Good Shepherd. But in the light of the week's events and the struggle that we've been through uh, uh, as a nation, trauma and uh, a sort of sort of war uh, going on, especially in the Natal region, uh, Reverend Alan Story wrote a, a meaningful opening prayer, a challenging opening prayer, as we invite God to be with us in this time and to challenge us too. Grace and peace to you in Jesus, who laments that we know not what makes for peace, and also with you. Living God, today we gather not so much to sing to you, but to cry to you. O Lord, hear the cries of our beloved country. We gather in grief to confess that we have brought wrath upon ourselves. We have refused to listen to your prophets who instructed us to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. Some of them we beat, others we killed. Some died in police vans and others in solitary cells. Living God, we have studied your word, but we have failed to act on your word. You have told us to prioritize the poor, but we have chosen instead to glorify the rich. You told us to hunger and thirst for justice, but we hunger and thirst for more and more stuff. And now we hunger and thirst for peace and calm. And now we fear it may be our time to hunger and thirst. Have mercy on us, O God, that we may learn from this moment. May our tears water our country's conscience. By your spirit, convict us to change. Wake us up from our sinful slumber. That wrath may be transformed into grace. Amazing grace that saves us from our wretchedness. And slaves of poverty go free. So all of us can be free. Amen. Our hymn this morning is Masibu Lele Kuyesu Gokupa. And you see there are words translated in English and you can actually sing along in English if you like. Uh, it's a very meaningful hymn and, and hopefully a hopeful hymn for this moment. <laughs> Wasenze la izi bele, goku si fera kwa ke. Charuba u charuba u, iba no fe fe kuti. Charuba u charuba u, iba no fe fe kuti. Tinaba twana bemfama oweza kuti apa akwake tabala lamtu wafela bazimfama taruba u taruba u ibano fefe kuti taruba. Abansun do nabam flope, mabu lelekunye, mabava kalise bonke, batu lele inkosi, taruba u taruba u, ibano fefe 
kuti taruba u taruba iba no Almighty God, and to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment to confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against all people, in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past. And grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. We pray together as Jesus has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 23, the Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. As we read Psalm 23, we need to be reminded that even though we're living through a time where death is, is a huge focus and many of us think of the loss of the loved ones that we've lost through the pandemic and, and it's often just been a focus in the news of how many people have died, etc. every day and we haven't been able to mourn and do the things that we normally would do at the times of loss and even this week for our church i can think of uh two two members of our church june fernandez and and um, harry lazarus who, who passed away harry from old age and june from COVID. we could think that this is all about death but this is also a psalm about life and it's a, a psalm about life with God, the Lord, as our shepherd. So I invite us to think about living with Jesus as our shepherd. And now we turn to Jeremiah 23, verse 1 to 8. And in this passage, we have a criticism of the kings and rulers of Jeremiah's time, but also of the religious leaders of the time. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away. And you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold. and They shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. And they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I'll raise up for David a righteous branch, 
and he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought the people of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. But as the Lord lives, who brought out and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the land of the north and out of all the lands where he had driven them, then they shall live in their own land. So we listen to the story of Jesus and we go on in Mark's gospel to read Mark chapter 6, verse 34, 30 to 34. We'll see that Jesus is ministering in an area of Israel, the northern areas of Israel, in an area called Galilee. So Judea and Jerusalem, if you can see my mouse pointer, is down in the bottom in the south. And Jesus' ministry is taking place up in the northern region, around the Sea of Galilee. And uh, you can get a little closer up, but it doesn't really help you too much But to know that he's, he's in the northern regions. And he's here at the Sea of Galilee. And uh, Gennesaret is over here. This is where they'll sail to. And uh, they were journeying around here. And they taking some time to uh, to sail, probably to get a bit of a break. But as soon as they got a break, people followed them along the shores. What's important about that geographical thing is this part of Jeremiah 23, verse 8, prophesying the idea that, that the, the, the Lord would bring the people from, from the land of the north and out of the lands where they had been driven. And so Jesus, in his geographical ministry throughout the land of Israel, he travels from the south, in Judea, up to the north to gather people and, and then comes down through past Jericho. And then we know on Palm Sunday, marching from Jericho to Jerusalem with this rebel crowd that he's gathered together to uh, restore to the kingdom of God. So we carry on in. Mark chapter 6, verse 30 to 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him what they had done and taught. So remember that Jesus had um, been preaching and teaching in his hometown and not much had happened. But then he had sent out the disciples to go out two by two to, to minister and to, to perform miracles and to, to heal. And they had done many things. But now that they had done all of this, he said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When we go past uh, about 20 verses there, and in those verses, Jesus uh, feeds 5,000. Uh, Jesus and the disciples feed 5,000. We, um, sorry, that, yeah, in those verses, he feeds the 5,000. He walks on water, and uh, then after all of that, they go back to Gennesaret. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and with the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, we pray. Amen. This is a beautiful painting by a Dutch artist, Anton Mauf. Mauf, I don't know how you'd say that in Dutch. And it's a, a picture of a shepherd and his sheep, and he's got a little sheepdog there. It's not a first century shepherd, it's a Dutch shepherd. 
But I just love this picture because you know, the one, one thing that, I know it sounds silly, but I love looking at old paintings and remembering that that, uh, that was the only way to, to sort of take a photograph in those days. And so scenes from the countryside would be recorded in this way. But as I look at this picture of the shepherd and the sheep, and, and, and if I think about the, the coldness of the time, I would just love to be one of those sheep because can you see how the sun is just shining on their backs as they stroll through the, through the meadows? And the shepherd keeps a watchful eye on them and the sheepdog there to just make sure that none of them stray. And I sometimes think to myself in times of stress, wouldn't it be nice to just be one of those nice soft sheep in the middle of that flock and just chilling and taking it easy and enjoying some nice green grass? And in these stressful times, as I think about Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I think about how good it would be to be shepherded. And when I think of that shepherding, I think of all the things that, that come from surrendering to this Lord in this Psalm, being led in the right paths and being guided by the rod and staff and having a table set before me that's full of food and places to lie down in green pastures and still waters. I really want that, don't you? But I realize that God offers us his shepherding arms. But in life, we still got all the stresses and strains that we need to face. For those who are affected by the looting and the economic disturbance of this time, you're running their businesses and they're trying to make ends meet and be good shepherds to the people around them. I can just imagine that the drained feeling that, that you must be experiencing right now. And, and don't you wish you could just hand it over to the shepherd, to the shepherd to guide you and lead you and provide for you. In Jeremiah 23, we have this example of bad shepherds, shepherds who, who scatter the sheep, shepherds who just, in uh, Jeremiah 23, goes on to talk about how they just eat the, eat the sheep and they don't care about them and they just use them and abuse them. And all those terrible things that these sheep, shepherds do to their sheep. And God's promise, Jeremiah's promise, is that there will be good shepherds who get raised up to shepherd. And the people will not fear any longer will be dismayed, nor shall any of the sheep be missing. And I think in this time of stress, we really do feel this, this fear, this fear about what's, what's going to happen next and how will I care for my family and, and friends and, and how will we make things good, which leads to dismay, uh, an experience of depression and hopelessness, which I think so many people are always going through. And then just this idea that some of the sheep just go missing. They disappear. I wonder if sheep get frustrated with their shepherd and wander off into the wilderness, leaving the flock, hoping that they'll get some snacks off on the side somewhere without the shepherd. Times like this, we really need to put our trust in this Jesus shepherd of ours. And I think our faith is stretched and tested more than it ever was or ever will be. But in our desperation, I want us to hear this message. The disciples and Jesus were headed off in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. And there's just this great amount of need and everybody's just clamoring for, for some help from Jesus. Many saw them going and recognized them hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And if Jesus had been any normal kind of shepherd, when he got there, he would have just um, moved the boat a little further. But this shepherd of ours, this Jesus shepherd, this miraculous creator of, of heaven and earth, the one who provides for us, he doesn't push the boat away from the shore. He sees the great crowd, and he has compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. It's not just that he 
has compassion on them or that he provides for them, but he actually begins to teach them. And he teaches them a way of thinking, a way of living that will help them cope with the stresses and the strains, that will give, give them hope for the future that we are preparing for. But he also does the work of healing. Then again, in 56, we hear about them going to Gennesaret, another place, and people rushed up and they brought people from all over the countryside on mats to wherever they heard that Jesus was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. And I love this image of the sort of outsiders, people on the outskirts, as they'd say, touching the hem of his garment. And sometimes in our lives, in our desperation as, as lost sheep, we might feel like those sheep. And you might just be on the very outskirts of your relationship with Jesus. You might be lying in the marketplace on your mat. And I invite you in this time of lying in the marketplace on your mat to, to realize that just a touch of the hem of his garment is enough to bring you healing and wholeness. But the better picture is the picture of, of being in the flock. And back to that image of being one of these sheep with the, the sun on your back feeling the warmth of God's presence as you, as you are shepherded by him. And that's the goal. The disciples, they go out and they make a difference in the world, in their ministry. As we read in verse 30, they gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And we're invited to go from being on the outskirts, from being healed by a touch of the hem of his garment, to being part of the flock to being part of those who walk with Jesus and become agents of healing and strength in the world. So at the moment, you might not feel like somebody who's going to make much difference. You might feel like you're on the outskirts. I invite you just to, to rest a while, to be like those who are laid on mats in the marketplace. You just touch the hem of his garment but I invite you to feel the healing strength that comes from Jesus in a time like that, to be included in the flock, to be included in, in Jesus' team that goes out to make a difference as he guides you, as he feeds you, as he sustains you. And I invite us as a church and as a community to surrender ourselves once again to God's gracious shepherding. Let's pray. We praise you, God for the world which you created and our place in it. You have given us life that we may love and serve you. Though we have resisted your purpose and misused your gift, you have not left us in our sin, but have sent your son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. We thank you that for us, he became human, died on the cross, rose from the dead, and descended into heaven. There he reigns in glory. And there he prays for us. And we believe that he will be our judge. We thank you that you have sent your Holy Spirit to bring us to a new life in Christ and give us freedom to call you Father. Therefore, with all the church on earth and in heaven, we give you our thanks and praise. We dedicate ourselves to you. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit to do your will and bring us with all people to your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In closing, we sing the hymn by John Gardner, Who Will Save? our land and people are reminded that Christ is enough to do all that we need him to do. Who will save our land and people? Who can rescue us from wrong? We are lost and false and foolish. We have slighted God too long. Save the people, Lord our Savior, guide us home from country far. Holy Father, consume our rancors, thy kingdom come in Africa. Make our land as clean and wholesome as the white of sea was sands. Stretch our vision vast and boundless as our brown spread dusty lands. 
Make our people strong and steadfast As the hills that claw our sky Hear our prayer for land and people God bless Africa, we cry We believe God is our Savior Christ enough to heal our land He will use the church's servants we on earth they stretched out hand may his church in loving service shown to all whose path is wrong give a clear united witness and proclaim christ is enough christ enough to break all barriers christ enough in peace and strife Christ enough to build our nation, Christ enough for death or life, Christ who will save our land and peace. Sorry about that, I brought into the hymn and I can't go back to fix it. And so I just imagine, I just invite you to imagine singing the rest of the hymn, Christ enough for old and lonely, Christ enough for those who fall, Christ enough to save the sin sick. Christ enough for one for all. And so we pray for one another as we say together and we just think about all those friends of ours from church and I invite you ready to reach out to the people that you know from church, send them a WhatsApp, send them a message, tell them you're thinking of them, leave a message in the comments on Facebook or on YouTube so others can see that you are there, just so that there's some sort of connection as we pray the grace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.